So a few days ago, I was on Twitter doom scrolling, minding my own business as usual, and that's when I noticed that a lot of people that I follow started talking about this open interpreter thing. And one tweet in particular caught my eye. Gary Marcus, a legendary cognitive scientist, tweeted, what could possibly go wrong? in reference to Open Interpreter, which naturally made me want to investigate a little further. It turns out that people see Open Interpreter as a free open source version of Code Interpreter, which is famously known as GPT 4.5 because of how capable it is. However, if you visit Open Interpreter's website, you might find that the authors claim that this product is a new way to communicate with computers which sounds really exciting, but also very ambitious. And one more interesting detail, the author mentioned the impressive number of stars that they got on GitHub. And he specifically said that they did in five days what Langchain did in five months. Meow. As this user said so eloquently, you just gotta love the humility. However, that is indeed a very impressive number of stars. Users seem to genuinely love using Open Interpreter and it's worth examining why. So will I give this few weeks old made by completely unknown author app total access to my precious laptop to analyze, create, modify all kinds of files as well as access to my browser? Hell yes. So let's start with Google Collab Notebook. And you can find the link to this demo on Open Interpreter's GitHub. So I'm beginning with this because this notebook provides a very good overview of what Open Interpreter can do. And it features examples that the team has chosen for us users. So let's start by installing the Open Interpreter. And in the next cell, you want to paste your OpenAI API key and don't worry, I'll revoke this key later. So if you run this cell, then you're gonna enable a auto run, which means that Open Interpreter doesn't have to ask you for your approval in order to run some code. So in the next section, we can use some basic examples to test out the interpreter. For example, you can ask it to print hello world or to do some complicated calculations for you, which is fine, but not really impressive. In the next part, you can ask the interpreter to browse the internet, which is actually a feature that Code interpreter doesn't offer right now, so that's a bonus point for Open Interpreter. I asked it to find the best stocks to invest in, and after an initial error, it was able to gather data from the internet and to tell me that in the last two years, the best performing, but also the most volatile stock has been Tesla. And I think that Interpreter did a good job. I also asked it to find stocks that I should invest in based on today's performance. Today is September 14, 2023, but it made an error and it did the analysis for September 14th of last year. Also, in order to reduce the number of tokens that sent to OpenAI, it's good to run this command, which resets the whole conversation. So this was a nice introduction, but now off to more interesting examples. For this first example, you're going to need Replicate API token, which you can create easily if you follow the link in the Collab notebook. Basically, I'm going to ask Interpreter to download this YouTube video to reduce the number of frames per second to only 12 and to give this video a hand-drawn effect with ControlNet. So let's see the result. As you can see, it made a list of tasks to execute and that reminds me of AutoGPT and other autonomous agents. Also, the Interpreter did all the debugging on its own, but oh no, not the looping. Unfortunately, it struggled with downloading the YouTube video, so I decided to rerun it, and this time I definitely had a lot more luck. So let's have a final look. I mean, this is very impressive. I didn't have to do anything to get this video. Interpreted did everything on its own. The only downside is that I paid almost $5 for this. So that was the moment when I realized that these experiments might be a road to poverty. So it was time for me to act as an adult. I decided to skip testing these following experiments, creating and editing documents, slowing and reverbing YouTube videos, as well as making artwork or adding subtitles to videos. That's all interesting and impressive, but I'm not willing to pay another $5 for each of these examples. Instead, I'll trust the authors that Open Interpreter works for all of these use cases. However, I couldn't resist trying out this example, converting YouTube to TikTok videos. I mean, this sounds like a fantastic use case, and personally, it would save me a lot of time, if it works. So I decided to copy paste one of my YouTube videos and to give it a try. But 40 minutes and another $10 later, I decided to stop the 
experiment. In those 40 minutes, I reran the interpreter six times, and it would only get to the part where it cuts the video. So the result of this experiment was one pixelated, low-resolution video that's perfectly cut, however. You can also run the interpreter locally. I suggest you first create a virtual environment, and then you can simply install it by running the command pip install open interpreter, and finally just run it with the command interpreter. And once the installation is over, you can choose between Code Llama, which is free and open source, or you can write your OpenAI API key and it's going to give you access to GPT-4, but you can also pick a cheaper GPT-3.5, which is what I chose to do because GPTs are better than Code Llama right now. And spoiler alert, I couldn't even download Code Llama, let alone run it. I tried, but there were so many errors and no matter what I tried, to do in the end, I had to switch to GPT-4. So that's what I did. I pasted my OpenAI key. I gave the interpreter a simple task. Unfortunately, I didn't really get far after this step because it started running into this one specific error over and over and over again. I did some debugging and I found other unfortunate souls that ran into the same bug. So I implemented the solution that I found on GitHub and it seemed to work in the beginning, because this time a new error appeared and I honestly started feeling frustrated at this point. So I decided to give up on running it locally. And I wanna be completely fair, and I have to mention that it seems to me that other users don't have these problems. For example, a lot of YouTubers made videos about how they use the interpreter locally. So I want to believe that I'm one of the few that didn't manage to run it. Also, I can see that the team is improving the code a lot, so hopefully they'll be able to fix these bugs in the near future. And I will definitely try to run it again in a week, so hopefully it'll be more successful next time. So to wrap things up, the good thing about Open Interpreter is that it seems to work well, at least when it comes to simpler tasks. And also it has access to the internet unlike Code Interpreter. What I really like about it is that I could see each step, every library that Interpreter decided to run, and to me that was very educational. It felt like an opportunity to see practical application of some of these libraries. Unfortunately, it was very prone to errors, much more than Code Interpreter, and the price is definitely a turnoff. Especially Especially if you cannot run Code Llama like me. For $20 a month, you can get access to GPT's Code Interpreter and all the plugins. And that's almost the same amount that I paid for experimenting with Open Interpreter for a few hours. But it's an open source project, team definitely has a cool idea and did a good job so far. And I'm pretty sure that in a few weeks, Open Interpreter will be even more useful. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something useful and see you in the next one. Bye.